Hey everyone, James here with Rococo, and as you can see, I am in a suit, and that is because I wanted to do a tutorial for our Motion Builder users uh, to showcase how to forward real-time data directly into Motion Builder. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, so as you can see, I do have my suit already active, um, and so what we want to do now is enable data forwarding. So in order to enable data, data forwarding th within Studio, you can go ahead and click on the cogwheel up here, and then you'll see under premium features, data is streaming. So um, it's important to note, if you don't know already, uh, data streaming is a premium feature, and so you will at least need to have a Rococo Studio Plus subscription in order to take advantage of this. Um, so once you get down to data streaming, you can go ahead and then see, you'll see uh, forward data. You just wanna go ahead and enable this just by clicking on it. Um, you'll also notice this Motion Builder Support button here. Now this is actually for enabling more than one suit. So if you have multiple suits in play and you want them um, all to be uh, forwarding their data to Motion Builder, you wanna enable this. Uh, but since we only have one suit in play, we're gonna go ahead and just uh, use, we're gonna leave this off and uh, just use this one suit. Um, the other things you need to pay attention to are the Ford IP, uh, Ford port, um, and uh, all of the other ports, just to make sure that they're different numbers. So for the forward IP, just wanna make sure that the, um, the IP address of the computer is listed here. Um, so this is the, the IP that we're gonna be forwarding the data to. Um, so just make sure that that is um, the IP of your computer. And then also just make sure, uh, take note of your forward port because we're gonna need that inside of Motion Builder when we go ahead and um, import our plugin. Um, speaking of the plugin, um, you will need to download it. Uh, I will have the link in the description and in our blog um, on where you can go ahead and download our plugin. So make sure to check the description for that. Uh, so with that being said, let's go ahead and jump over to Motion Builder and I can show you how to set it all up. All right, so here we are in Motion Builder. Uh, and the first thing that we wanna do inside of here is to install our plugin. Um, so if you haven't already, you can go ahead and download the plugin from our website and the link is in the description and on our blog post. Um, and essentially when you download it, it's just gonna be the file of the plugin inside of a folder. So you're gonna wanna take note of where you save this folder um, because we're gonna tell Motion Builder where exactly this folder is and then it's gonna install the plugin. So in order to do that, um, go up to settings, then preferences, and then if you go down to SDK, you'll then, uh, there shouldn't be anything in here uh, unless you have other plugins. Um, but as you see, we already have the plugin installed um, and we just need to go ahead and find the directory of where that, um, where you saved the plugin. And you just go ahead and click add and then you're gonna locate the folder of where it's saved and click okay. And so since we already have it um, installed, we're good to go. Um, but once you add it and click okay, it's gonna prompt you to restart uh, Motion Builder so that it, it can install. So, but now since we do have it already installed, uh, our next step is to go ahead and import our character. So we're gonna go ahead and go up to File, Open, and then we're gonna import our character here. And then we're gonna go ahead and just uh, leave this these settings as default and click OK, or click Open, and then you'll see our character pop up here. And so the first thing that we wanna do with our character is define its skeleton. Um, so in order to do that, we need to get a good picture of the, or a good view of the um, actual rig on this character. So in order to do that, we can go ahead and just remove his mesh. Um, so if we go down to scene, expand that, and then we'll just highlight all of the mesh. And then we'll go up to display, and then we'll go to hide selected. And so now all we can see is his rig. And so now we wanna go ahead and click on define skeleton and then this prompt will pop up and you just go ahead and click define. And then you'll notice uh, this um, image pop up. So we're essentially gonna be uh, assigning joints to each of one of these um, bones. And so we're gonna start from the bottom and we're gonna start right down here on the uh, left toe base. So we highlight that and we find the left toe base here so by clicking this arrow and then it's right here. So you can just right click and then assign selected bone. So we're essentially gonna be doing this for all of the joints. Um, so we'll do this here, left foot, right click, assign selected bone. And then you'll notice for everyone that we're doing on the left side, it's also mirroring it on the right side. So you only need to do one side. Um, so we're just gonna go ahead and assign all of these joints and I'm gonna fast forward the video for you. Uh, 
All right, so since now that we've gone ahead and defined our joints, we, now we wanna go ahead and create a control rig. So in order to do that, we click on the blue box here, go down to create and then click control rig. And it's gonna ask if it's a biped or a quadruped. This is a biped, so we'll click on that. And then it'll ask what type of control rig. We'll say FKIK. Um, and then once that's done, we can go ahead and uh, then uh, switch our source to none. And then um, we're done setting up this particular character. So we can actually um, bring back the mesh. So if we click on display and go to show unselected, you'll now see his mesh. And so let's go ahead and uh, we can move him just slightly out of the way um, because now we're gonna go ahead and um, set up the skeleton for data forwarding. And so in order to do that, we wanna go over to templates, expand this out, and then go down to devices, and then you'll see smart suit. You just wanna click and drag this into our scene, and then now we'll have it here, and you'll see it in our navigator. If you expand devices, we have smart suit. And so th these are the, um, the settings that we can manipulate. And the first thing that we wanna do in here is um, create a model binding. So if we click on this drop down, we can click create, and it'll create a skeleton for us. And we essentially wanna do the same exact thing that we did with our character for this particular skeleton. So let's go ahead now and switch our character up here to none. And then you'll get these options again. And then we'll click define skeleton, click define. And then we're just gonna do the same exact process. We're gonna grab this bottom joint, which is the left foot, right click, assign bone. So I'll go ahead and do this again and fast forward the video. All right, so we've gone ahead and defined our skeleton, and then we're gonna do the same thing uh, as the previous character and create a control rig. So I'll click on this blue box, go over to create, and then control rig, and the same settings, biped and FKIK. And then we can go ahead and switch uh, the source of this to none. And then now what we wanna go ahead and do is um, essentially uh, enable the source of this uh, skeleton to, to be the source of our um, character. So we want to switch to our first character, which is this one, and then change the source of that to character one, and it'll overlap over here. And then now if we go back to our smart suit down here, we want to adjust our network settings. Um, so our streaming port is going to be the data forward port that was in studio, and that ended with a three. And then if we go to command port, we can go ahead, uh, just change that from 5,000 to 5,001. And then if you have the suit ID, you can input the suit ID here, um, or just leave it as any, and it'll go ahead and pick up the suit ID if you have one suit um, that's currently live. Um, and then the last thing you need to do is just hit online. And as you can see, now I'm currently controlling our character using the suit. So that is essentially how you go ahead and set up data forwarding for your character in Motion Builder. I hope this was very helpful for you guys, and I definitely look forward to seeing what you all be able to create using this method. So I appreciate you watching. Thanks, guys, and I'll catch you next time.